I like this movie more than all the other ones I've watched. Um, it started out really good. I was looking forward to it. I really liked most of the characters. Like, they actually feel like characters. Um, and they're all pretty entertaining, too. So that's obviously a plus. Then, the movie just kind of takes a turn and feels rushed. They start bringing in a bunch of random characters, like this pervert that wants a meal. Um, two dudes that cars breaks down. And there's a few others that I'm probably forgetting. There's random people spliced throughout the movie getting killed. And they also have, like, the most random kill ever that later becomes not random. Where there's this dude that just wants to help people. And he says the wrong thing to the wrong person. He tells him he's out of line and walks away. And then he gets killed. This movie actually takes place in a different setting than... Most other movies with most other movies just being random teens, you know, being horny. There's still that because it's a Friday the 13th movie, but just random teens being horny at a random house. This place takes place with um, three camp counselors and one of the counselors' kids. Not really camp, but just a bunch of people with like. Mental disabilities being taken care of by three people. They all got something wrong with them. And they never say, though, with everybody. There's more just, um, every other character calling it the loony bin or a nut house or referring to them as nuts. And then eventually, like, some of the characters just, like, disappear. Like, not, oh, Jason, you know, came towards them and they screamed at the camera and then nothing happened. No, they just, like, straight up disappear from the movie. Just to, like, later show them. Like, student Mark and the grandpa disappear. Just for them later to show them. Just randomly. I was almost thinking they might have, like, went to, like, a store and you had to survive or something. But no, like, she bumps into Mark's body and Gramps gets thrown through a window. Which we've seen that probably three times now. Um, and they recreate the one kill that they've been doing way too many goddamn times right now where, you know, a knife or something goes through the bed and it kills them. And this one... And this one isn't even brutal. Like, the one with the bow and arrow with Kevin Bacon's was pretty brutal. And then there was the recreation of it with, um, I think it was literally the last movie, the final chapter. And then they do it again in this movie, and we don't even see any blood. Like, we just see the knife come up, and it kills her. And then that's it. <laughs> And then Jason does like a terrible job at hiding the bodies in this movie. Because he just takes all three of them. Puts them in Tommy's room. And that's it. And he lays them all on Tommy's bed. Terrible hiding spot. And Tommy is obviously played by a different actor. Because the actor was literally a kid. And still a kid a few years ago. And they wanted an adult. So, yeah, he's an adult in this movie, and he, like, becomes Jason near the end or something. I don't know. This movie was really good, but it just took a weird turn. Um, they also have the weakest final girl of the series so far in this movie. All the other ones kicked ass. The first one um, kicked ass. 
against Mrs. Voorhees and the last one kicked ass along with her brother, little brother Tommy. Which they also didn't, don't explain where the hell she's at. They're just like, yeah, he he's traumatized. So now he's going to this place. And then that's it. Um, the, the one girl hung the dude in that one movie. It was the third one, I think. And there's also the one where she was just straight up stabbing Jason. I don't know. It's been a few days since I've, you know, kept up with these movies. I stopped after the final chapter for a little bit. So now I don't really remember it as well. But yeah, like all the final girls have kicked ass so far. And this final girl, she gets saved by a little kid named Reggie the Reckless. And then Reggie, like, gets his leg to grab after he saves her and, like, she kicks Jason. They run into a barn and, like, she uses a chainsaw for a little bit and gets, like, a little hit on Jason with the chainsaw. Which, you know, it's Jason, so that's not really a big deal. It would have been a big deal if it was anybody else. And then, um... Immediately she needs saving because it quits working. It's out of gas or something. Um, so then she's saved by Tommy. And then they all get up there and like Tommy like immediately passes out. I assumed he was faking. But apparently he wasn't because he wakes up later to help during that scene. Anyways, Reggie saves her again. So, Reggie saves her twice, and Tommy saves her once, and all she did was, like, kick Jason to save Reggie after he saved her. Which isn't very, you know, impressive because, you know, she's just saving a child. <laughs> it's not like a, she helped save a grown man. Then, um, we find out that it's not actually Jason, so I guess it kind of is impressive. I almost forgot about that. It's the r random paramedic that showed up when the one kid was murdered that pissed off the wrong dude. And he was, like, the dad of the dude that got murdered. And, like, he abandoned him or something. It's just so weird and dumb. And then eventually, the movie ends with him putting on the fake Jason's mask, Tommy, I mean. And sneaking up behind the final girl. And he has a knife, and then the movie ends. There's also one thing I wanted to mention that I almost forgot that was completely dumb. The movie starts with Jason is buried and he has his machete in the grave with him. How nice of them to bury him with a weapon he used to murder people. How considerate. It's so dumb. Not to mention, they literally mention later in the movie that he's cremated. Like, I, I don't get what's happening then. Was that a dream sequence? Why would they open up the movie with a dream sequence? Isn't that just something they usually do near the end of the movie? But, yeah. That's about it. <laughs>